Hi, it's Esther here for another episode of Exploring Creativity, where we take um, a little time to look at different paths and passions and ideas that have gone into a piece of art just to like chill out and take a step back. Anyway, I'm running a little bit late. Sorry if anybody was actually here when I said I would be here technical difficulties. Anyway, um, I'm going to be speaking tonight about these two paintings called guinea pig intestines. There you go. There you have it. Um, just to let you know, I'm actually interested because I'm very happy to talk about work I've done. Um, I find that, you know, I actually enjoy getting it out there and letting you know. But I'm also interested in interviewing some other painters, photographers who I know. And um, so hopefully in the next couple weeks, few weeks, I will be sharing my stage, going and interviewing other people and asking them about their work. Because that is always a delight to figure out where they're going and why they're doing it. And, you know, it's like a quest for the Holy Grail you know, trying to get in there and figure out what they're doing. So anyway, I'm, um, I'm going to turn it around and talk to you about the little guinea pigs here. Let's see if we can do that. Of course we can do that. We always do that. Let's go. Woo! Plants and guinea pig intestines. Okay, so let's have a little look. Okay, so the title already, let's mention the title since it's guinea pig intestines. Um, yes, uh, a good friend who's very good with words and observations and an artist in her own right, Beth, uh, came up with that title. She looked at them and said, ooh, well, ooh, that looks like guinea pig intestines. I don't know what her relationship is with guinea pig intestines. Personally, I have never seen them, but there is something intestinal happening here. Infinitesimally, oh, actually, no, kind of blown up under a microscope bowl, um, intestinal thing happening here. Uh, I liked it, you know, because they are rather pretty and ornate and to put a little moniker of guinea pig intestines, which is kind of gross, um, or at least we think it's gross. It's actually probably beautiful, um, is a way of I don't know, I like a little bit of subversive. If they were paintings, personally, if they were paintings of guinea pig intestines, actual real live guinea pig intestines, knowing me, I would try to find another title. Something having nothing whatsoever to do with guinea pig intestines. Kind of like, actually, wait a minute, over my head, back here, because these were a series. Back here, she, if you can see her, let's see, I don't know if you can zoom. Oh, you can, you can zoom. There you go, zooming on. She's called Beads, just so you know. She's called Beads. And um, that's a nicer title, but I don't like a nice title. I kind of like a little naughty title. Anyway, hopefully I can unzoom. Let's see. Oh shoot, don't tell me I'm stuck in Zoom. Anyway, I'm gonna turn it around and see if it unzooms. Yes. All right, I am just really rocking the technology tonight. All right, so we could put things in context here because these paintings come from, hey, we've got, we've got people, loved ones watching. That's always nice. Hello, hello. Thank you for coming. Hi, Athena. Let's see. Okay, so back to the paintings. Uh, let's put them in context. I lose my train of thought like you wouldn't believe. So anyway, I'm sure none of you do. Uh, context, context, context. Oh, these were made in 2006, uh, shortly after I moved into a studio where I wanted to do paintings, because they are canvas. They're paintings on canvas, let's look. You can see that they're on canvas. They even went over the edges. I like, I liked, you know, no boundaries. But to put them in context, I had been in another studio working on large drawings, very large drawings, two meters, two yards by one and a half meter, one and a half yards, as you like to say, doesn't really matter. They were big, very human size scale. And you can see that these are, here, you just saw my hand on it. These are, 
you know, they're not minuscule, they're not teeny weeny microscopic paintings, but they're they're not two meters by one and a half meters. So let's hold the camera a little bit steady. So um I decided I wanted to paint and when you and I just was pulling it down to a tiny surface. Therefore I wanted it to not I wanted it. It became quite dense. I mean look at we're gonna stick it all in there. When you you look in the drawings previous to that it's a it, there's more space. But here I was trying to take something big and bring it right back down. So you kind of compress it, compress it in. Um, funnily enough, in later work, it becomes much more compressed. But this was relatively compressed to that time. Um, and then I'm looking at the drawing and the painting beads that are going through it, the little intestines that are going through it. And it, so weaving, I mean, sometimes I would put the ink down first. Sometimes I put the painting, no, I generally would put the ink first. And then I would move to paint. And then I would go back to drawing. And then I would go back to paint. Uh, and so that they go, look, at, you can even see it. Look, at, here we go. You've got the drawing and the paint goes behind it. You've got the paint and the drawing goes behind it. The paint goes under the drawing. So it's a weaving, which, um, yeah, we're weaving. Weaving, again, connecting things in between it, around it, through it. And which brings me back to, like, in other work, I actually refer to knitting. I mean, here, here I'm going to give a quick look because that's what we looked at last week. Um, and that's from 2000. I'm not going to pull it too far away from that's from 2000, and I can't remember what I said, 2012, 13, 10, something. And it's, um, and it's a very different um, work. Also dense. But these, these, oh, and that, I mentioned it because of the knitting. It's almost a knitted element. So let's look at the colors here. Let's go, to, let's knit from weaving and knitting. Uh, again, these interconnected, generally feminine sports, but um, guys are getting into the whole knitting and weaving thing lately. It's kind of cool, you know? And there's some big, important weavers out there. You just look, check them out. I mean, Sheila Hicks, obviously the superstar, but there's a lot more of them. And they're doing incredible things. Embroidery is making a comeback, too. Uh, in fact, it's probably making a comeback before, but I, embroidery, weaving, knitting, all play little roles, and they have that little interconnecting thing. So then we also can look at the colors. Let's let's see what we find when we look at the colors. Um, again, because I was playing with those dark pastels before, but these are kind of a more, I don't know. I play with like the colors to find like a little bit of royalty happening. I like. I like royal colors, and you know, doesn't it look like a Tibetan prince could play with those guinea pig intestines? Mess the colors around. There's a lot of experimentation. You see, I've flipped. You've got purple around the brown here. You, got, you, you just flip it, the red, the yellow, the purple, the brown, just experimenting. Um, and to be honest, these are from 2006, so myself, I would need to work on them more. Anyway, I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but while we're here, let's look at the, um, also the, the, um, the sizing and the scale, which I've mentioned previously, that you can have, see, it's actually all rather mono, mono sized, if that's a word. You have all the chain link and even the beads don't vary in size, which when I made it, that was fine by me in 2006. Now in 2000 and where are we? 2021. Damn, that's a long time. I'm old lady. Well, um, it's, it's, um, why do I keep coming back to this one? Let's stay on this one for a little while. Um, it's, um, you know, do you want them to be the same size? Do you want that systematically to be the same size? Or do you need to mix it up a bit? Do a little bit of a change? Um, and I would ask myself these questions. Um, and I want you to know that like, in, like you can, I'm asking these questions, 
But then I answer them in things like this. So I say I'm answering it, but it actually um, is being answered. Like the, the, the work is speaking to each other. It's a dialogue. It's a conversation over time. I know that people say that artists through the centuries and through all sorts of eras speak with each other through their art. But I actually can see within my own art that my art speaks to each other. Like, oh, here's a problematic. And it's, I rest in a, in a, stay in a certain level of dissatisfaction always. I mean, incredible satisfaction and pleasure in doing what I do. And yet there's always a grappling with a problem and looking back and looking forward. And, and there's a level of dissatisfaction in a positive way, um, in a driving force kind of way. Uh, I mean, there again, I, I think I'm playing with metaphor, you know, life, life. You've, you just keep doing it because you want it to, you, you want to know what happens. It's a mystery and you want to see how it's going to turn out and what's going to happen differently. Um, but within <clears throat> the painting, I mean, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're quite beautiful as they are. If I left them in my studio, I'd have to paint on them and do other things to them because I can't. That's just the way it is. I mean, is it, it's not just a, a compulsion. It's, it's, I've changed, I've moved, and other issues are happening. At the time, it was density and color, and now it's, you know, all sorts of other... You can see on my website how the different work communicates with each other, um, how they converse. I, I, have, I don't have all my body of work on the website at this time, uh, and I may never. I don't think I ever would. It would be too much. But a significant amount of work so that you can actually see how it is the conversation. The exploring of the creativity is the conversation that's happening. Anyway, what else do we have to do? Oh, yeah, dissatisfaction and its continued exploration. So um, here I get to sum up, and I usually drag that out a little bit. I'm back on this side. Um, and if you're still with me, which some of you are, hello. Bonjour, Maud. C'est bien te voir. Même que je peux pas te voir. Et Sam and Athena, thank you so much for coming. You guys rock. Um, anyway, um, if you like this video, share it. That's always a good thing. That's a good thing for me. Um, and make comments. That's a good thing, too. Um, check out the website. Ask questions, any questions you have. I'll eventually somehow, in some way, get around to answering them. Um, I don't know. If you've got anything to reflect, I like feedback. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's the, some of the sisters, brothers, fraternal, friendly creatures uh, that accompany the other two. Anyway, you take it easy. You stay healthy. Wear the mask. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Mm. See? I have lipstick on. This is like the only time without a mask that like someone sees me with, well, outside of my family, which nobody uh, appreciates my lipstick in this family, <laughs> but I do. So actually, I'm being a victim. Anyway, let's, uh, let's say goodbye. Um, you love my clothing ideas. Yes, well, I'll be getting around to the clothing in the future, definitely. Um, there'll be way too much more on the clothing. Take it easy, everybody. Stay in good health to get that vitamin D. I love you tons. Thanks for showing up. And um, undoubtedly, I'll see you here next weekend. Bye.